Hello, welcome to this video series on linear approximations and differentials. We're going to find out, basically, we're just talking about the tangent line in disguise. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm going to guide you through this journey. Let's get started with the goal. We want to find a general formula that represents the tangent line for whatever function you might want to find it for. So the visual is helpful. You got some graph of a function in blue there. That function y is y equals f of x. There's some particular point of interest that you're worried about finding the, the tangent line at or approximating the function at, and that's going to be x equals a. You plug in x equals a, out comes f of a, and we'll have a tangent line, and we'll call that line capital L of x. All right. We'll go to point slope formula. Y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. We know that the slope of this line is going to be the derivative. If you learn nothing else from this class, you'll learn that for sure. And so it'll be the derivative, though, evaluated at x equals a. Okay. So we'll just put that in there. Uh, the x value that we call x1 or x0, um, that x value is a. And the y value is f of a. It should be marked off on this graph, but this on the x-axis, the a should be marked off, but it isn't. So then we'll plug these all in. y minus y1, who's f of a, is equal to m, who's f prime of a, times the quantity of x minus x1, who is a. That's it. Solve it for y. Add the f of a over you are looking at the linearization of the function, capital L of x. It's just a tangent line written in y equals format. But we're going to find out this, this the way this is written is very special. We have our original value, f of a, and then we have this quantity that's being added to f of a. It's the product of f prime of a and x minus a, the quantity there. And we have to um, recognize that uh, that piece right there is going to be called differentials. We'll, we'll hold that for the next video, though. Okay. All right. Great. So what's the point? Why are we doing this? We want to use the tangent line to, to approximate the values of a function. Okay. So when you do that, though, you'll be off. Okay. It's a good approximation so long as you stay close to your point of tangency. The, if you if you move far away from it, there's a big gap between the tangent line and your actual function. And so stay close enough to A, you'll have very good approximations. So we don't say that f of x is equal to the tangent line. We say f of x is approximately equal to the tangent line. Nearby, x equals A. This is our linear approximation. All right, great. Let's see an example. We know for sure that the square root of 17 is close to the square root of 16. And we know for sure that the square root of 16 is definitely 4. So this number should be something close to 4. Where Our job is to figure out, is it going to be more than 4, less than 4? We're going to use linearization to estimate the square root of 17. We got to figure out is our estimate an overestimate or an underestimate? All right, step one in the process, we have to find the function that we're talking about. We have to find what the nearby value is that we know. And we have to call the input to that x equals a. So our function for sure is the square root of x. The nearby value that we know is the square root of 16. That makes a equal to 16. Now we know the players. We're ready to build our tangent line. There's a formula that we just talked about. It starts with the function, and it's going to be approximately equal to the derivative at a times the quantity of x minus a, and that gets added to the old value of f of a, the known value. Okay, so let's take our derivative. If our function is the square root of x, then that's x to the half. Bring the half down. Take a take x to the negative one half. And so we can put it back down in the x and in, um, in the denominator with a positive exponent. So yeah, the derivative of root x is one over two root x. Plug a sixteen into that because that's our a value. 
Root 16 is definitely 4. Double the 4, you get an 8. So 1 8 is the slope of your tangent line. That's what's going to go in place of f prime of 16 there. That gets multiplied by the quantity of x minus 16. And then that is what gets added to the known value of the square root of 16. We know that's a 4. And now we can see how much the, the y value changes. Root x is approximately equal to 1 eighth times the quantity of x minus 16 plus 4. This is nearby x equals 16, though. You don't want to use this as an approximation to the square root of 2. Too far away from 16. Stay close to 16, you have a really good approximation. All right, great. So let's plug in the x value that we're trying to approximate. We're trying to figure out what the square root of 17 is. We're going to plug it into what's in the box there. Square root of 17 is approximately equal to 1 eighth times the quantity of 17 minus 16. All of that gets then added to 4. 17 minus 16, that's just 1. 1 eighth of 1, just 1 eighth. 4 plus 1 eighth. What we're going to do is like write our answers. We don't have a calculator, right? Calculators are forbidden. That's okay. We just write our answer as an improper fraction. And then when, when it's time to figure out how good it is, then we can go to a calculator. All right. This video is getting kind of long. Let's hurry up and finish up. So let's look at the actual calculator answer. And let's look at the decimal version of our answer, right? It's, it's 4 and 1 eighth. 1 eighth is 0.125 amazing accuracy we have the one we have the two and in the third spot in the thousand spot we're only off by two thousandths it's amazingly accurate just with the power of our brain no calculators at all is this a um over an estimate or an underestimate that's based off the second derivative okay when your second derivative is negative like ours is then that means that your function is concave down, like a frown. Well, we already know the root function is concave down. When you put a tangent line to that, the tangent line is going to be on top of it. And so above the function. So you plug it into the tangent line is going to give you something bigger than what you would get by plugging into the function. There's a the visual there. My point 16 is in green there. The y value is 4. 17. It's hard to see. It's so accurate that you can't even see a difference in the graph because you stayed so close to 16. If you want to get more accurate, then you want to um, move even like you can. You can approximate the square root of 16.1 very accurately. I mean, this is this is amazingly accurate here. All right. In our next video, we look at differentials. Basically, we changed x by 1, and that caused y to change by 1 eighth. That piece there, the change in y, we're going to look at in our next video. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Please like and subscribe and comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video.